Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'll show you how to make a seamless pattern brush in Adobe Illustrator. I'll be making the interlocking pattern brush you see pictured on the outer circle of my Christmas design. In a future video, I'll show you how to make the circles pattern brush and then the double stroke pattern brush. For now, I'm going to move to a document I've already set up with a sample of the design I'll be making and the color swatches I'll be using. Before we get started, I want to talk about how pattern brushes work in Illustrator. I'm going to make a copy of the design and bring it down to the center of the artboard. In order for a design to be made into a seamless pattern brush, the left sides must match up with the right sides when they're placed end to end. Let me show you. I'll just hold down the Option and the Shift keys and drag a copy to the right, and then I'll drag a copy to the left. And this design is going to be perfect for a pattern brush because you can't see where one of the pieces ends and another one begins. That's why precision is very important as we create our design so that Illustrator is able to turn it into a seamless pattern brush. I'll delete these designs now and let's get started. I'll get the line segment tool, keyboard shortcut backslash, and click on the artboard to open the line segment tool options dialog box. I'll type in four inches for the length and tab down and type in zero for the angle and then say OK. Now I'm going to change the color to black on the stroke and increase its weight to 15 points and press the return key. Next, I'll apply an effect to this line. I'll come up to Effect, down to Distort and Transform, over and down to Zigzag. Here, I'll type in 0.25 inches for the size. I'm going to leave Absolute checked. I'll change the number of ridges per segment to 5 and I'll choose Smooth Points and then say OK. Now that the effect has been applied, I can change my line segment to an object. I'll come up to Object, down to Path, and choose Outline Stroke. And then I'll get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and slide this slightly to the left, and then I'll make a copy. I'll hold down the Option key for the copy, and I'll hold the Shift key down so as I drag to the right, my copy stays on the same horizontal axis. And I'm going to change the color fill of this object to our green color. I'll get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and apply the green swatch. Then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard to deselect that. For the next step, I need to turn my rulers on. I can either come over to the Properties panel, since nothing is selected on the artboard, and I can click on the rulers, or I can use the keyboard shortcut Command-R. Now I'll select my black zigzag line, come over to the left ruler, click down and drag a guide, and place it on the anchor at the center of the bottom of that lower loop and this is where I'm going to be dragging the green zigzag to intersect. So I'll select the green zigzag and I'll hold down the shift key so as I drag to the left it stays on that same horizontal axis. And when I intersect with the guide I should see the word intersect and I'll release my mouse. If you don't see the word intersect then go up to view and turn smart guides on keyboard shortcut command U. Now I can select my guide and delete it. To create the interlocking appearance, I'm going to click on the red swatch to make that the active color on my artboard, and then I'll select the black and the green zigzags and get the Shape Builder tool, keyboard shortcut Shift M. I'll start on the left side of the black zigzag and press down with my mouse and drag across this first lower loop, cross the green, go to the upper loop, and release my mouse. I'll leave this green alone here, and then I'll press down on the black, drag over the green, and back to the black, leave the next green alone, and then go over this last black, and that gives me an over and under effect. Now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard so I can come over and change my active color on the artboard to green. Then I'll select both of these objects again and get the shape builder tool again, keyboard shortcut Shift M, 
because I have some pieces of the green that need to be joined. I'll click down and drag across this first section here and then this second section, then get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard to deselect them. Now that I have the interlocking look accomplished, I'll select both of the zigzag lines and apply a two-point black stroke to these objects and then come up to Object and come down and choose Expand. And this is really important. Don't forget to expand your artwork. Fill and Stroke are selected and I'll say OK. Then I'll click on the artboard to deselect them. Earlier, I talked about how important it is for the left side and the right side to match up. So we're only going to use a portion of the design we've created. You can see from this example what we're going to be pulling out of this design. And I've got to be very precise when I do it. So I'll select the object. I'm going to drag a guide from the ruler and I'll place it on the anchors on this little green loop here and then we're going to place another guide on the other side so I'll select it drag a guide out and place it on the anchor now these guides represent the exact place on the left side and the right side where my pattern is going to repeat next I have to create a bounding box so Illustrator understands those boundaries a bounding box is an invisible rectangle that we place behind the design so I'll get the rectangle tool keyboard shortcut M I'll come over to the properties panel and make sure I don't have a fill or a stroke and then I'll start on the left guide just above the design and drag down to the right guide just below the design and then release my mouse. Next, I've got to move that bounding box to the back layer. And so I'll use the keyboard shortcut, Shift Command, left bracket. Now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. I can select the guides and delete them. And then I'm going to select all of the objects and the bounding box. Come over to the properties panel in the Pathfinder area and I'll click on this ellipsis for more options. I'm going to click now on the Divide Pathfinder and you don't initially see that anything's happened on the artboard but in fact every piece is now divided. I'll well, select all of these pieces and I want to ungroup them. Keyboard shortcut Shift Command G. Then I'll move into the outline viewing mode, keyboard shortcut Command Y, so you can see a little better what I'm going to do next. I'm going to lasso over the objects that are on the right side of the bounding box and I'll press the delete key because we don't need those anymore. Then I'll do the same thing on the left side, select the pieces that are outside the bounding box and press delete. I just want to make sure that I don't take any part of the bounding box away. Now move back into the preview mode, keyboard shortcut command Y and select the remaining pieces and group them, keyboard shortcut command G. Now we're ready to create our pattern brush. I already have the brushes panel on the right side of my workspace. You can find yours by going up to window, down to brushes. You can either click here or use the keyboard shortcut F5. And then you can grab hold of the tab and just dock it with your other tabs on the right side of your workspace. I have the design selected and the brushes panel open. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the brushes panel and click on this little box with a plus sign in it. This is the new brush icon and it brings up the new brush dialog box. I'll choose pattern brush and say OK and then I'm going to name this red green interlocking brush. I'll leave the scale set to fixed and I won't change spacing, but I do want to talk to you about some of these bins that we come to next. We've created the repeating part of the pattern brush, which is applied to straight lines. That's in bin number two. It's called the side tile. But if we have an outside corner, we're going to need a different piece. And Illustrator places the outside corner suggestions in bin number one. And it gives us four choices 
voices. I'm going to look at auto centered and you can see what that would look like. But I want to go ahead and leave auto sliced. I like that one the best. Now we also might have an inner corner which is represented in the third bin. And I can twirl down here and we have four choices as well. We could do the auto centered, but I'm going to choose auto sliced to match the outer corner. I'll leave the rest of the settings alone, press OK, and our new brush is added to the brushes panel. Now let's check it out and see how it looks on a rectangle. I'll get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, drag this out onto the artboard, and click on our new brush to apply it. Then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard to deselect the rectangle. Well, the pattern brush itself is seamless, and I even like the corners that have been applied. But if I want to change that, all I have to do is select the rectangle, double click on our pattern brush, and reopen the pattern brush options dialog box. And I can twirl down on this outer corner tile and change it to auto centered and say OK. Illustrator is going to ask if I want to apply the change to this particular rectangle, and I'm going to tell it to apply it to the strokes. And here we have the changed corner tile. Now I'll delete the rectangle and I'm going to get the paintbrush tool, keyboard shortcut B, and we'll do some drawing with our pattern brush. And you can do all sorts of things, and no matter what direction you draw in, Illustrator is going to apply that pattern brush seamlessly. Now if I want to change the size of the pattern brush, I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, select the stroke it's applied to, come to the properties panel, and I can decrease the size of the stroke, which decreases the size of the pattern brush, or I can increase it. And I can go quite large, or I can go quite small. So you see there are a lot of different ways to use the pattern brush once you've created it. They're a lot of fun to make and they're fun to use. And I hope that in this video you've enjoyed learning how to make them. In the next video I'll show you how to make two more seamless pattern brushes, the round balls and the double stroke. Be sure and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you don't miss that video or any of my future tutorials, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.